Hey, welcome to a great Tuesday. A little muggy outside here, but it's still a great day as we enter into the second half of the book of the book of the month of August. Kids are in school and uh, learning is going on, and some of us are just not getting it. Anyway. It's a great day. I hope it's a great day for you, and I want to thank you for being with me. And come on into my little world for just a moment as we think about a thing or two together. Been a good day so far. Uh, loaded up a whole bunch of stuff, sent to the Tipton's Children's Home, a wonderful long-term children's home down in southwestern Oklahoma near the town of Tipton. Great place. A lot of young people have grown up there, and we sent a bunch of supplies down there today and what a what a neat thing to be able to do anyway glad you're with me today and as you come into my little world let's think together for just a moment you know one of my favorite classes when i was in elementary school was library class because basically all we did in library class for the most part was read she did teach us about the dewey decimal system and a few other things like that but more than anything she taught us the opportunity of reading is precious I learned to read a lot of biographies, enjoyed a lot of history and things like that. Just had a lot of fun. Just for about 45 minutes a day, we would go into that class and we could just read whatever book we had in the library that we wanted. Good thing about it is our library and our cafeteria were the same room in our school. And so it always smelled like food in there. Maybe that's part of why I enjoyed it so much and I relate reading to eating. Anyway, but that all being said, <clears throat> I think we gotta re recognize the value that books bring into our lives. I know so many people listen to books, I do that. So many read them on their, their tablets or their phones or whatever they have handy on their computers as well. As we read books that way much more or even more than we did not long ago than even the, the printed pages, but still, isn't it fun to go into a bookstore and see all those books and all those books and just kind of the smell and the, the aura of it and recognize all the information that's gathered there in that place. It's kind of special. Bring the books. Bring the books. You know, that's what Paul, uh, that's what Paul shared with Timothy in that second letter that we've got in the Bible, 2 Timothy, in chapter 4. And the things he says basically he wants him to come to him, bring the cloak that I left behind. And he says, and the books, bring the books, especially the parchments. He said, but bring the books. I don't know what books he had in mind. Maybe it's some of the Old Testament stuff. Maybe it's something else. But the books were important to him then and, and how books are important to us now. I was thinking about a lady we knew. She passed away probably about 30 years ago now. She was into her 90s when she passed away and lived a full life. Her name was Uetta Hairgrove. Uetta Hairgrove. She was a nice lady. By the time I came to know her and came to the Drexel congregation and, and she was a member there, they had, they had plug-in hearing assists in some of the pews in the, in the auditorium in that building and she would plug in and she had a wand type hearing thing, but half the time it didn't work and I'd see her get frustrated because she couldn't hear very well at all and she'd get mad, she'd just put the things down and I knew she would sit through service sometimes and she didn't hear a tenth of what was going on there. But sometimes she did very well. But she was late, she had a good attitude. She wanted to be there, she was there regularly, she took part in it. But she was also losing her eyesight. Her eyesight had gotten very poor. Her hearing was bad, her eyesight was bad. Of course, sometimes we'd go by and pick her up. And I remember one occasion where my family stopped by to pick her up, to bring her to worship service on a Sunday morning. She was about half turned away from the door and I was standing there banging on her storm door. I could see her inside. She had the front door open, but the storm door was locked and I banged on it. I even went around to the side window, and but she couldn't hear me. She couldn't hear a thing. She didn't, if she wore hearing aids, they didn't work. I don't think she wore any, but she couldn't hear anything. And of course she couldn't see well at all. And so she just kind of hoped that she would catch whoever was at the door when they came. We didn't get to pick her up that day, but I thought about her sometime because she was, she had a good attitude about most things. And one day she told me, as the service was ending, she said, I'd like you to come by and see me. And she told me a day that week. She said, I want you to come see me. 
let's say it was a Tuesday, I don't remember what day it was. And I said, yes ma'am, I'll come by and see you. And so I went by her house on, on a Tuesday afternoon. And when she figured out who I was and I got into the house, she says, oh, oh, oh yeah, I wanted you to come by. She said, come back in here. We went back in to a room, a guest room in her house. And, and she said, here, sit down on the foot of the bed. And I sat down on the foot of the bed. And, and she walked over a few feet to a little, a little uh, book cabinet. And she pulled out a book and she handed me the book. And she said, now tell me what it is. And I don't remember which one that was. It was a Knaves topical Bible. There was a, a, a Johnson's commentary in two volumes. There were several other books that were there. And she'd pull one off, she'd hand it to me, and she'd say, tell me what it is. And so I would tell her as loudly as I could what it was, and then she would take it back from me, she would hold it, and she would rub it with her hands very carefully. And she said, I want you to have this book. And then she would give me that book, and then another book would be pulled off and bring, we'd go through the same routine. And I believe she gave me about a half dozen books that way then, that day, and she had some others she was giving to some other people, but she would, she would put those books in her hands and she would rub her hands on those books. And one of the times that she was putting her hand on the book and she was rubbing it on there, she said, it's a terrible thing to lose your eyesight. She said, I hope you never learn what it is. I hope you never lo lose your eyesight. Now, let me put in a little caveat here. I know a lot of people that have, and, and know of them that have, are blind, have lost their eyesight. And they learned how to live extremely well, even with their eyesight gone. But I guarantee you, if you ask any of them, would you like to have your eyesight back? Most of them would say yes. Most of them would say yes. I'd like to be able to see again. I think about, I think about the man confronting Jesus. What did, would you want from me? And he said that I might see again or I might have my eyesight. It's a special thing to be able to see. Anyway, she said, it's a terrible thing to lose your eyesight. And she said, because I can't read anymore. And I just thought, how, how much was lost in life when she couldn't read the books anymore? This is bef much before audiobooks. Yes, there were some on cassette, and she would listen to her Bible and play the cassettes, but it was far less convenient than it is today. You can listen to all kinds of books, and it's with great ease today online and so forth. But I thought about it. She said, it's a terrible thing to lose your eyesight. I've seen her through some tough things. I'd seen her when her son died and we stood by the grave and she said mothers aren't supposed to have to bury their children, but her, her son passed away before she did. But she said it's a terrible thing to lose your eyesight. And I thought about Paul and we've sometimes wondered how was his eyesight. But he told Timothy and the books, when you come, bring the cloak, and the books, and especially the parchments. I said, I assume those were for reading as well. But bring the books. I thought about those books. The room in which I sit and do this, as you notice, there are a lot of books here. Some of them belong to my father. Many of them I picked up along the way. A few have been given, many of them purchased. As I've gone through life, I enjoy the books. I enjoy looking at them. Somebody came in one day and said, have you read every one of these books? I said, no. Oh, I've read from most of them. I've used a lot of them for resources. I've drawn from them. With the advancement of computers and the technology that we have and the, what we have online and able to access, I probably don't use them as much as I once did. But the eyesight and to be able to see the books and read them. And I think I'll never forget her words when she told me, I hope you never lose your eyesight because she wanted to be able to read those books and how precious those books were to her. You know, today, no matter what your eyesight may be, you may wear extremely corrective lenses, you may be limited, you may have only one eye that you see with. You may have macular degeneration and so some of the things that might be in your view are blocked from view, but if you can see it all today, if your eyesight is working at all, I want you to think about that and how precious it is to see words and be able to read those words. Bible and other things. To be able to see a picture in artistry and beauty. To see your loved ones, your children, your grandchildren, or your great-grandchildren, as some of you tell me about. You can see the colors, the majesty, the depth, and all those things. What a wonderful thing God gave us. 
when he gave us eyes to see and the opportunity to read and draw from the books. But maybe even as you step outside today and you look around you and you see the wonders of nature, the sky blue, the sun shining, don't stare at it, some clouds floating by, the green of the grass, and so many other things around you, the sights and the beauty of it. Thank God for your eyesight. However strong or diminished it may be, thank God for your eyesight. I'll never forget you at a hair grove, and I hope you never lose your eyesight and how much she loved those books. And Paul, when you come, bring the cloak I left and the books. Thank God for the eyes that see and read and the appreciation that grows from it. Hey, I hope you have a great day. I hope it's a blessing to you and you get to share it with so many others today that you get to see them and look them in the eye and see their beautiful faces round about you. Hey, glad you're with me today. We'll share some more things a little further down the road, but what a great day it is. Hey, and as they say, thanks for coming into my little world and I'll see you later.